Hey, it's your Pan-African World Diaspora Champion, Trish Adora, and you are watching O-Face Wrestling. <laughs> hey guys, it's your girl Red Velvet, and you are watching O-Face Wrestling. Hola a todos. Soy la fashionista, Rache Chanel, and you're watching O-Face Wrestling. <laughs> Smooches! Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to O-Face Wrestling. This is your host, JT, and today I'm joined by the WUW Women's Champion, Jada Rose. So thanks for joining us today, Jada. No problem. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. So I'm really excited to have you on the show today. I actually have watched a couple of your matches on YouTube for WUW, and I'm really excited for this opportunity just because I've seen, you know, a decent amount of your matches, and I, I think you're great, and I just think it's oh, like a really big honor to have you on the show today. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so I just want to get off, you know, and start with like the basic questions, you know, like, so how did you like, what got you into wanting to become a professional wrestler? So I watched it growing up. My dad got me into wrestling and I, I started watching during the Attitude Era. So <laughs> three, four year old me watching <laughs> wrestling at that point, but I didn't, um, uh, connect to it in a way where I thought that I could do it as a profession. Um, I actually wanted to be a forensic scientist. So I went to school for that and I completely stumbled across it, just spur of the moment, um, right time, right place. And uh, I'm the type of person that once I start something, like I'm in it. So the moment I sent that email, I told myself if I get a response, I'm going full throttle with it. Yeah, so like uh, the like the '90s, that was like the best time to get into wrestling and stuff like that. And I and I think I can like relate to you because like as much of a fan as I was, it's, it's not something that I felt like a lot of people growing up, you know, especially back before like social media was really a thing. Like a lot of people really thought like they could do and make a career because it's like you didn't really know how to even like where to start. You know, you right. can't like do wrestling in high school and college and all like you can with you know baseball and football and all that kind of stuff. It's like you have to really search and look for the schools and, you know, and it's not like you see them advertised, at least not here in Maryland. You don't see them advertised on like television and stuff like that. Oh, train to be a wrestler. Like you have to search and it's a little bit more difficult to find out how to get into it versus, you know, like other sports. And then you get the, I know obviously it's typically a lot of money to pay for the training and stuff like that. So it's, it's a little bit like difficult, but um, it's like, you just really have to like really want to do it and really know what you're doing when it comes to like the research and stuff like that. So I, I understand where you're coming from and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's cool that you got into it in the attitude era. Cause like, like I said, that was the best time for wrestling. So I have to ask like, who was your favorite wrestler when you were young? Oh, um, Stone Cold definitely had my attention as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Or Yeah. I feel like it was like impossible not to like Stone Cold growing up because he was just so freaking cool and stuff like that. And even when he comes out to the like to this day, which obviously isn't very often, it just still gives you that like really the like goosebumps and stuff like that when the, the glass breaks. You like you'll never see a superstar like him ever again. Yeah, it's because it's relatable. We all feel that way towards something. Just... Our our boss, like we all want to stunner our boss at the end of the day. <laughs> and yeah, so um. Uh, and that being said, that was your favorite wrestler growing up. Who's your favorite right now? So if you would have asked me this before I started training, um, definitely it was so much easier to start to, to pick favorites before I started training. Um, my, my favorites at that point were AJ Lee, um, CM Punk. But now that I'm on this side of it, the the wrestlers that I didn't give a second look to or the wrestlers that I felt were overhyped or whatever it may be, I I see um why people love them. I, I see their contribution to wrestling in a different way. So it's really hard for me to to not even having a politically correct answer, like it's really hard for me to say this person's my favorite when I can see 
how everyone contributes um, to professional wrestling now. It's a lot of hard work. It is. It's a, It's definitely a lot of hard work. And I feel like, you know, a lot of wrestlers don't get the credit they deserve because like you all go out there and just, you know, you're putting your body on the line for our entertainment. And it's just like all the little things that, you know, a fan doesn't see that, you know, you all go through. Like I like I, all the wrestlers I've talked to, they all agree, like even like running the ropes is painful at first. You know, like I've I've seen pictures online of like the bruises and all like no one's going to think if you're not a fan. I mean, if you are a fan and you've never wrestled, you're not going to think that hurts. You know what I mean? You're going to think that's just running back and forth. No, like all the rolls and stuff like that. Like I tried actually probably like a few years ago, I tried doing a roll. I forgot what I was doing. I was being silly and I, I was like, I'm not doing that again. That hurt. Like, you know, like. <laughs> It's just all these little things that y'all do that actually like really like hurt and just are painful. And even getting a, a regular like, body slam on the mat, like, uh, you know, like growing up, I never knew that was wood under there for whatever reason. I thought that was like some kind of cushion or something like that. And it didn't really hurt. But then when you go to these indie events, you could hear it like it's loud on um, the, the my last event that I went to in Tennessee. It was so freaking loud. Like it was scary loud. I was like, I, I was like, is this, is, did they have some like really like freaking like hard wood under there like that, that they typically yeah. don't use. Cause I'd never heard it that loud before, you know, like it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Every ring really is different. You don't know what you're getting into until you step on, on that canvas for sure. Exactly. And now I, I want to like, I want to hear your experience with um, training with WUW because I know I just um, got done recording with Tatiana recently and I want to just kind of hear your perspective on your experience, you know, training there. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the way that I describe it is you really get out what you put in um, at WUW. So it's, the head trainer is uh, Johnny Ross, who's a, WW, a WWE uh, Hall of Famer. And uh, for the most part, he he can see without looking. He knows exactly what's going on in the ring. And for the most part, it's us in the ring working with each other, uh, you know, on the technical things, but also on the creativity that comes with being in the ring. And every once in a while, it's been happening a lot more often now, but he'll come out and if there's something good that he sees he can add his wisdom to, he'll, he'll come out there and practice will turn into something, it's simple, but it's dynamic. So um, that's what it's been a lot of lately. He he takes what we're already doing and adds his wisdom to it. And in regards to the piece of uh, what you get out is whatever you put in. I, I've been training since 2017 and I, I came as I come as often as I can, three, four days out of the week. And I go to the gym outside of practice, you know, so I, I'm putting in that time, but Post uh, COVID, I can see with other wrestlers there as well. Something kind of like clicked for us. Maybe it was it you know being gone for so long, but I see all of us training uh, with more discipline than what we had before. We were already disciplined, but it's we we see uh, ourselves uh, reaping the benefits of that hard work we've been putting in over the couple of years. So it, it really is. The harder you work, the more you're going to get out of it, for sure. Speaking of, you know, all the hard work you put in and everything you've gotten out of it, obviously, you know, you are the WUW Women's Champion. So how does it feel knowing that this company, which is ran by a WWE Hall of Famer, likes you so much and sees so much potential in you? He wants you to be representing the women's division for your promotion. So just tell me, how does that feel like getting that opportunity? It. So when I first got the belt, um, I was only a couple of months in. So I didn't understand why this was given to me. I'm like, I really don't know what I'm doing. I still don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> um, much less then. But it, it really is about trust. You know, he's training us to be professional 
wrestlers. So when you're given the opportunity to get the belt, it's ultimately saying that there's a level of trust in you being professional and representing um, WW. So, I mean, really it is an, an honor that I don't, you know, we're, we're just training, but it, it really is an honor to, to get it and for the trainer to see that, okay, I can trust you with this. Let's see, you know, what you can do with it at this point of your training. So that being said, like, how long, like, when, how long have you been the champion right now? I, this run began January, 2020. So like right before the pandemic, February, 2020, right before the pandemic. Okay. So that being said, like, what are your goals with the title? Like, who are like, what kind of things do you want to accomplish as being a champion, like with the company? Well, just um, being one of the veteran girls there, I really want to make sure that I'm passing on everything that I can pass on to the other um, girls that are coming into WW. Um, you can know it for yourself, but if you're able to give that knowledge to other people, like that shows that you you really understand what you're what you're picking up. So, I mean, title or no title, that's I want to make sure that I'm able to pass on everything that was given to me. And I, and I like that a lot too because I feel like when it comes to the wrestling business, especially like women's wrestling, you know. It, it has to be everyone coming together and working together to to elevate women's wrestling because no one person can do it by themselves. We've seen in, you know, like for women's wrestling, we've seen plenty of great women, you know, go out there and just do good, you know, in their air. But then it just it, it wasn't enough for just one person to really like take it to that level and keep it at that level. And now we see now in the women's evolution, you know, whether it's WWE Impact. AEW um, indies, we're seeing a lot of women step up and really come together. And that's why I feel like it's growing as a whole because you, you have everyone working and helping together. And that's the same thing with like a company. No, like, no, like business can run off of one person. Like it's a team effort, like football, like you can't win just with one good player. Like it just, it's not going to happen, you know, like um, trying to, I was trying to think of a really good excuse. I mean, not excuse, an example, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know, regards of how good that one player is, you know, he just can't carry the team on his back and stuff like that. Even like as good as Michael Jordan was, he had Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman, you know, like, um, that's just how it is. And I, I really like that mindset you have, and I feel like it will definitely take you far in the business. Thank you. You're welcome. So now, um, I want to learn about your character because I know like you're, a wrestler's character is very important when it comes to like really growing and, you know, getting bigger in the business. So just tell me a little bit about like your character so far and, you know, what it's about and what inspired it and everything. Yes. Yeah, so how I present myself in the ring is me. <laughs> it's uh, me. Um, I'm competitive. I'm passionate. Like I, I, I put my heart out there. That's, 100% um, who I am. The uh, the gear I make myself. <laughs> um, the name actually is my, Jada's my government name. And the rose comes from my great, great grandma actually who passed away literally a year before I joined WW. Um, and she was a huge wrestling fan. Favorite wrestler was Ricky Steamboat. Like she was in it. So the that's where the last name the last name comes from. Rose was her last name. And I just put an H in there because you know a little different. Yeah, I like that. I feel like Jada Rose just sounds really good, and I, I like how it actually like means something to it. it. Isn't just some random thing like you put together. Oh, this sounds cool. Like no, it actually has like a meaning behind, it, and I think that's also really good too. I feel like that can really help with inspiring you because like 
a, a name is everything I feel like you know and a name really like is what gets people's attention and stuff like that and then having a meaning behind it just adds to the meaning and the story and everything like that so I think that's pretty dope and I think that's also cool that you um make your own gear um I don't really I, I don't know how many wrestlers do that I'm sure more than you think but like yeah. I, I know like Bianca Belair, for example, makes her own gear. And I think that's really cool. So like, is that something that you already were good at prior to wrestling, like making clothing and stuff like that? Or did you just kind of start doing it after you became a wrestler? It came out of complete necessity. <laughs> um, my first show was in our gym that we train in. So I did my wrestling practice tights and a sports bra, called it a day. I was only three weeks in. But I knew the next show was going to be at a bigger venue that we were doing at the time, LaBoom. And I knew I couldn't go out there with my practice clothes on. So I had went home a couple of weeks before and my grandma showed me how to sew. And 60 bucks worth of fabric, sewing machine is, you know, much more efficient for me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just that's just one skill that I feel like it's really great to have in the wrestling business because you can really customize things to your liking versus having to search for something online that you may or may not like, you know, because it's because you can make it however you wanted to make it and stuff like that. And I think that's really cool, you know, and like I said, you could always add your own little twist or spice to the gear that just really make it like there's no like like you've never seen before, you know, like. Like, and once again, going back to Bianca Belair, I know she's had like the gear with her, like her lipstick kind of logo on it. And I think she's had it with like her actual self on it. So I think like you could do a lot of things and really like make yourself stand out. Yeah. And even, you know, just knowing how to work a, a needle and thread, you know, stuff happens, seems rip during matches, having that and being able to just do a quick touch up, you know, is, it's a really important skill that gets overlooked for sure yeah and I feel like it's not as easy as people think too I tried actually um because I'm really cheap when it comes to work clothes I don't really like spending money on work clothes and I got a hole in one of my work jeans and I was like oh, I'm not gonna spend like 20 bucks on a new pair I'm gonna go buy some string and a needle at the Walmart for like a few bucks and I it, it was horrible the way it, I got it like sewed up you know the whole set up it looked like shit like it looked it looked like a little kid as long as... <laughs> but um yeah so like that's and I, i'm i've never used a sewing machine i'm scared to use it my mom had one growing up and i just felt like i was always getting my finger stuck in it or something like that no i promise you it's not as difficult as it looks yeah maybe one day i'll test you know if i ever have to i think my mom still has it. she's one of the people just holds on stuff forever but maybe one day i'll try it out if i ever get like a hole in my one of my clothes or something like that just to say I did it but I have to watch like a tutorial on uh, like YouTube or something like that and actually I, I I do do stuff like that when I tried to learn how to tie a tie I got on YouTube and it taught me so there you go so now um I got just a few more questions for you so um my next question is what do you feel like is the biggest challenge when it to being a professional wrestler that a lot of people don't think about like prior to getting into it like what's that like hidden challenge that you just feel like just no one knows about I think you tied me up with hidden <laughs> the word hidden that's a a good add-on right there so There's so much exposure, you know, we're, we're really exposed to wrestling more than we were, you know, 20 years ago. So I believe that people don't realize how much you have to continue to, to put in, even after you've been doing it for however many years, there's just a vast amount of knowledge out there. You don't hit a, a, a finishing point. You, you know, there's always something else to learn. There's always something else to take from a match, um, a trip 
to a show, there's always just something to take from an, an experience in, in this business. And I think one of the more difficult parts of this journey is keeping yourself open to having knowledge brought to you. I've caught myself, you know, multiple times feeling like I've learned enough. It's very easy to fall into that trap. You feel yourself getting better. You know, you're feeling good about where you are, but there's something in staying level-minded enough to realize that I don't know it all. And there's still, I'm never going to know it all. And there's so much more to learn. So I think that's something that people don't even think about with wrestling. You know, you're just going for the journey, going for the, you know, the ride, but it, it doesn't end. So with that not ending, what are you going to do about that knowledge that you can gain from it? Are you just going to let it pass you by or are you going to allow yourself to be a sponge through your entire career? Yeah, because like that's the tricky thing or not tricky thing, but like really interesting thing about wrestling. It, it just keeps evolving and you can sit there and learn everything that you need to know for what's going on during that certain time period. But then new things keep happening. And I feel like, you know, right now it's technology, streaming, everything like that, like. Um, everyone is on social media, you know, social media is a good way to get yourself over. It's mm -hmm. a good way to, um, promote yourself and your brand, your merch and everything like that. And it's also something that can really break you. If you do the wrong thing on social media, everyone's going to know about it and it can really ruin someone's career. And I feel like just knowing like, or being careful because you know like there's like it's back when social media really wasn't the most popular thing people don't think about what they say but now we see pe like things resurfacing like i know there was a wrestler in wwe who posted something like several years way before going to wwe and then it resurfaced and they got released you know so it's like you have to just know how to kind of handle yourself not just when you're inside the ring or at the event but also at home on your personal social media like there's just like so many things that are you know how the business is growing and everything like that and just the style of wrestling has changed too like yeah back in like the 80s you know people their finisher moves were like leg drops and stuff like that now people are doing all these flippy things and i feel like wrestling has become faster it's more athletic more high flying style and stuff like that too so it's like everything is evolving with it at the end of the day yeah yeah so now my, uh, I got two more questions for you. Um, now this one is my non-wrestling related question. So what is something about yourself that you would want fans to know, whether it was an accomplishment or just like maybe like a hobby or interest or something like that? So I guess the sewing hints at it, but I, I'm a creative person all around. I paint. I draw, um, obviously I design clothing. Um, that creativity flows into other avenues outside of wrestling. So um, yeah, it's not just limited to that. I, I try to put my hands in, in other creative avenues as well. So when it comes to like painting and drawing and stuff like that, like, do you like to kind of like, what kind of stuff do you like to draw and paint? I try to do abstract. So with painting, I'm oil on canvas and I close my eyes, envision something super random and try to my best to put it on, on paper or on canvas. Um, with drawing, I do more realistic um, pieces it's a little bit more difficult, I find, to freehand, look at something and then freehand it. So I enjoy challenging myself with that. And sewing, you know, same thing as kind of with uh, oil on canvas. I try to think of the most bizarre or extreme thing that I don't think I'm possible, it's possible to turn into clothing and turn it into clothing. I've been pretty safe with my gear as far as like design, um, but I definitely have drawings of gear that 
when I get good enough, I definitely want to attempt. But you know, you can't have lopsided <laughs> one thing shorter than the other unintentionally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's pretty cool that you're like coming up with ideas and actually drawing it out. So when you're actually like feel like you're ready, you could actually like create the gear and stuff like this. I think that's pretty neat. I know like when it comes like the drawing and painting, I just never like I I try when I was little, I wanted to get into it and actually like really try to do it. And I just could never do it. Like I just suck at drawing. And I I feel like because I was always told it's one of those things like you either have it or you don't. Like, I don't know if it's one of those things you can necessarily just keep practicing on. I mean, I feel like you can only get so good if you, like, really don't have it. But I, I used to like to draw, like, goofy, like, photos, like, when I was younger, like, of, like, funny-looking faces and the eyeballs looking funny and stuff like that. That was, like, the best I could do. But I do think it's a pretty cool, like, thing to have. And I feel like it could also, like it could also be like a, a nice little like side job. If anything, like people can, you know, people will pay good money for stuff like that. Even like, yeah. I'm not necessarily painting and drawing, but like with computer stuff too, like when people do like all the little graphics and photo editing and stuff like that, I know that's like re- getting really popular nowadays that like um, social media is getting popular. Like my banner in the ba- behind me, like I, I paid someone to do it. I, I found out one of my Twitter followers did this kind of stuff. I'm like, Hey, can you do this for me? Like, you know, it can be a career, you know? Yeah, wrestling is definitely, uh, people don't think to apply their talents to wrestling, but there's so much room in the, in the business for that type of talent. You know, it's just, wrestling still somewhat niche in the grand scheme, but I have friends who are graphic artists and I'm like, hey, one day I'm, I'm gonna need you to do this. <laughs> for me 100 percent yeah i've seen them um, i've seen wrestlers post stuff on social media of like stuff that fans have drawn of them like paintings of them and stuff like that like you can make like as a fan man you can make that like a little business too because they you know wrestlers will like you know i'm sure they will pay other people for this kind of stuff too to help like you know use to help promote themselves and stuff like that so i think that's you know there's a lot you could do like a lot of skills and all that you could really like use with wrestling because like like we said like the wrestling business is growing and evolving and there's just so many different things you could do with it nowadays oh yeah for sure now my last and final question and this is the one i usually always end all my interviews with so if wwe gave you an opportunity to compete at wrestlemania and you could challenge anyone across any brands on the grandest stage of them all, who would you choose? So I've watched your podcast, so I, I prepare for this question. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely uh, Sasha Banks, two out of three, for sure. Like a two out of three falls? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be a dope match. Uh, has she ever in general competed in like a two out of three falls? I know she did the 30 minute Iron Man match. Yeah, she's yeah. done Iron Man matches. I'm trying, I, I don't recall if she has. I don't recall. I would love to see that though. I think maybe, that, I, maybe she'd want an NXT. She might have done something like that in NXT. I know that was so long ago, dude. I know because I know she did the. She did the 30 minute Ironman match with Bailey, but I can't think of any other like big like stipulation matches she's done in NXT. I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but that was because I know she left NXT like in 2015, I think. So yeah. it's been, like six years now. But yeah, regardless, that would just be a really dope match. And I feel like the, any anyone who wants to challenge Sasha Banks, that you could do no wrong because Sasha Banks has an amazing match with everyone. I don't know what she does to make magic with anyone. Like, because you know how some people they just don't have chemistry with other people and it just right. doesn't work. But somehow she makes it work. And even with Alexa Bliss, who apparently they hate each other. I don't know if that's true or not, but they still, you know, had a really good match. I remember it was that Great Balls of Fire, I think it was. That was a really good match. And it's, it's just, you know, I feel like with someone like her, you could also like you, you brought up being like a sponge and soak in knowledge. I feel like you could learn a lot from her, too, which what I feel like anyone would benefit from. Yeah, she's, you know, she tells a great story in the ring. She, she's she got that down. So, yeah. And I think that's all that's one of the like important things, because, I mean, w- one thing about wrestling now is just like there's so many good wrestlers out there. There's no shortage of talent, but there's that, you know, telling a story. And that, that's something that has never changed in the business, like whether, you know, the golden era, attitude era, we all want to see a story. 
being told in the ring and that's what you know makes the best matches out there like all the historical matches that people still talk about to this day whether it was rick flair and Shawn michaels undertaker and triple h undertaker and Shawn michaels like bret hart and stone cold like people talk about those matches because it told a story and that's you know that's something that i feel like is kind of becoming a lost art like i feel like a lot of people aren't realizing that that's like one of the most important things but yeah like that that's something that she does very well so um yeah jada i just i just want to thank you again for joining us today on o face wrestling like this was like a big deal having you on my show so i was definitely really honored to have you (laughs) oh thank you (laughs) you're welcome Um, i appreciate i appreciate your patience with me (laughs) i know no problem at all you know i know i actually like over a year ago so like i'm i'm really happy we finally got to do this so, uh, Jada, did you want to share your social media with all the listeners so they know where to find you at? Yes, Twitter and Instagram, both Jada Rose, Rose spelled R H O S E. All right, so make sure y'all go follow Jada on Twitter and Instagram. I will put the links in the bio below for y'all. And then also make sure you give us a sub on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And thank you all for listening in and have a great day, everyone.